Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Nice to see you back. Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. So today I'm going to be showing you how to do my signature drag look. It's gonna be probably a longer tutorial, so I'm gonna jump right into it. First off, just going in with the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. So use about two pumps, and that looks a bit naughty. Ignore my hair, it's a mess. <sighs> so for my base, I'm going to be going in with the Cryolan TV Paint Stick in shade 406. Then I'm just gonna be going in with the old trusty Inglot base buffer. And while I do that, I'm gonna be answering some more questions that I couldn't get to in the previous video. So, questions from Instagram. How do you get new ideas? Well, new ideas, huh, they come from everywhere. They come from things that happen, people that I meet, music that I listen to, movies that I watch, specifically horror movies or very over the top. 80s sci-fi movies, none of that new cringe sci-fi stuff. I don't hate all new sci-fi movies, but it's like the practical stuff, you know? Getting it in every nook and cranny. I don't use concealer with these looks because I'm going for the white, pale look. Because it just sort of makes me feel like I'm turning into a drawing. Getting there a little bit. I like doing that, it makes me feel complete. I can't really get it all over on my hearing aid, so I just... I'm just gonna go in with my velvet sponge to finish all the crannies a little bit more. Yes, I know it looks disgusting. I washed it quite a lot, so it's very clean. It's just oud. Another question from Instagram. Who are your influencers? Uh, probably have about 50 million of them. I mean, Gaga is my number one. I said that in a previous one. Miley, with that Dead Pets album, just really stood out to me and inspired me to do my first looks, which are on Instagram. Because I feel like I just want to keep them up so people can see where I started instead of just pretending, ah, oh, no, I started like this straight away. I mean, everyone starts somewhere. But I have a lot of friends that influence me as well. And so many of my drag friends really just motivate me to be doing what I am doing right now. And other people that have influenced me are bands like Hatari, Icelandic Trio that loves to scream and wear leather and spandex and stuff, which I now do as well. Okay, now that I'm nice and pale, I am going to go in with my eye products. Now, I don't cover my brows and I didn't feel like I need to shave my brows at the moment because this is this is all just going to be black, basically. So, hardly be able to see the eyebrows unless you zoom in. I don't care. Zoom in. I'm going to be taking some P. Louise liquid eyeshadow base in black and putting it on this brush and tracing my shape first. Sort of mapping out where this fold ends so they can just be as if I've stamped on a shape. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is like a big over the top drag look. It's more about the attitude than how perfect it is. And I like to just go straight up. Perfect. Or not, who knows, but you know. Then over here, I'm gonna be going pie slice angle and just going over the brow bone and connecting right in the corner here. And just to sort of give that black base a fighting chance, I like to go in with a makeup wipe and just get rid of all the excess foundation because you don't want all these layers conflicting with each other. <sighs> so now I'm going back in with the liquid eyeshadow base with this brush. And 
while I work on this painstaking step, I'm going to answer another question. So someone knows me very well and has asked top three companions. So context, that's for Doctor Who. And I'm going to be ranting about this, so get ready. My number one companion of all time is Rose Tyler. She is just the ultimate companion. I'm sorry, but... Actually, I'm not sorry. Such an icon and me being a little gay kid and just seeing her being herself um, strangely taught me a lot of compassion and I just love her. I cried for actually three days from the finale of season two because of the beach and when she came back in season four because nothing makes me cry but that does. It still does. That's the only thing that gets me going like that. And my second favourite companion would be Donna Noble. She's hilarious. Just had a really great dynamic with the Doctor in season four. And my third favourite, I can't, I have, I have to say four because one's from the new series but one's from the older ones. So I feel like that's fair. Third favourite is Martha Jones. I feel like she's really underrated, but she is iconic. She is iconic. I just hate that in season three, there were just two, three episodes all in New York. Like, go to more places. And the final companion is Sarah Jane Smith, Tom Baker era. I used to watch her on DVDs borrowed from the public library. Now I'm just going back in with my angle brush. I'll be right back after doing the other side. I'm gonna be going in with the blue and then just touching up the eyeliner here. I'm gonna be going in with the KVD Divine Palette. I can't hold it that great because part of it's broken. I'm going in with this blue color. Just going in with a nice blending brush. Alrighty, so I've just gone in and done the blue shadow, touched up the liner. I like to use black eyeshadow on top of the black liner to just really set it nice and in place and just gives it that. So now I'm gonna go into correcting any mistakes on my face and just set it with powder. And then we're gonna go into blush. Just going in with the Fenty Beauty setting powder in lavender. So for blush slash contour, I'm going to be going into the Inglot palette. I'm going to be using this pink and then this red that I don't have space for. And I'm going to be showing you a trick using cardboard. So I've just gone ahead and packed this brush full of red. I just want it to be super intense because I'm trying to create this very intense upward shape. And then I just go like this and hold it like that. And then just and then just buffing it out at the top, filling all that space and have a nice blend going on. And once I'm happy with the intensity. And then I'm gonna go in with this brush. I'm gonna go in with that pink and just go on top of I'm very happy with it. I'm just gonna go in with some powder on a sponge. Really reinforce that cut line. I'll be right back. Didn't go anywhere. I'm watching. Looking hot. Loving it. Now I'm just gonna do the same process minus the cardboard on my jawline here. I like to go from where my chin goes, you know, in this curve here. I like to go straight up. Yeah. Let me show you. Just swipe. Go run 
chill pine smiling under the chin so that when I look at you it's like fading in like a bit of burn sunburn I guess <laughs> so while I just go in and just blend out this contour I'm going to answer some more questions what are your top three favourite drinks? Mm. My top three favourite drinks are ice lattes, cappuccinos and water. Those are the only three things that I drink. Unless I'm out on the town, I order a whiskey and coke or a gin and tonic or a fruit tingle. Those are my top three alcoholic drinks. But I literally, I don't drink Pepsi unless it's like with KFC. Otherwise, I'm so anal about water because as soon as I don't have enough water in me, I'm suffering, honestly. And it affects my skin so much as well. And it has to be cold water too. It has to be like ice cold. I cannot do room temperature or tap water because my tap water tastes like ass and not the good kind. I love when I get to this stage and it all comes together. Now I'm just going to do a nice little border of blush around my forehead. Hardly going to be able to see it when the wig is on, but I just like for it to be there, you know. Yeah, it's literally like that. Go in like this a little bit. So it takes up some room on my forehead because I've got a massive forehead. I should charge to advertise on my forehead. I got this tip from John McLean. John McLean to hold the brush from the end and irrevocably so brushing the pigment around for seamlessness. And then getting a clean brush and just tapping it. Tap 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 tap. And another question from Instagram, everyone is being so supportive and really helping me be more confident with making this content. Biggest lesson you've learned with makeup application. Well, with application, I really think to look at what suits your face, what complements what area. It's like a weird mathematics, really. You know, using negative and positive spacing to achieve what it is that you want, really play around with it. I think one of the things that I struggled with was doing trends or techniques that were very for the trends, very, well, this is what's popular, so I have to do what's popular. And that's so easy to lose yourself with. And so I've just really found my own techniques it's it's taken me seven years to get to this signature look like this is my staple this is what I've worked towards from experimenting and doing techniques that I really wouldn't have and a way that I saw that when I was younger is watching the tribe and certain characters like Ebony played by Meryl Cassie who is just so lovely and wonderful and treats me like a friend as like I get to talk to this woman that I've lived up to for so long and she wants me to do her makeup? What? Anyway, with her character, there was a very signature look but it would always evolve, it would always change but you could still always tell that it was her and I hope to achieve that with my drag. I hope to always be doing something different but people being able to look at it and be like, that's her and like that's that's them with blending if you think you're done with blending blend a little bit more honestly blend more and clean your brushes now for nose contouring i don't really do much for this look you know people might do like a really intense contour down the line and put concealer down the middle to make like a cut but for me it's bringing you in i like to just highlight just around here like rudolph really so i just take my big brush just really use the excess and just tap it's better to build it up than put a lot on and be like can't really do that 
So this is going to be the most intense spot of the nose contour. So this way I can use my clean brush and blend it out. So it's kind of like I'm cold. You know, I'm cold nose, you know. Going up. I like to go up the bridge a little bit. So then it shows how skinny the nose is without doing anything to bonkers on the sides. I don't know if you can see, but yeah, it's kind of gone up there, showing off that space. Because I want everything to be sort of leading up, leading up to the eyes and all that. So, five times out of ten, so either one or the other, I will do like slick eyeliner divine eyebrows. If you don't know who divine is, then you need to do some googling and it will change your life. Okay, thank you. I don't want to do brows because I want to use pink highlighter to really highlight that space there because I've got an extra big on the liner today so I don't want to take up too much room of what's left so I'm just going to put a highlighter there. So I'll be going in with the KVD Middle Crush Extreme Highlighter in Rose Shop. I have to be really delicate there because it's broken but like um boy. So just taking this clean brush, a little bit stiffer, a little bit more pointed so I can get it really nice and focused. Nice. Uh, see what I mean? You don't always need eyebrows. A highlighter just does the job for you. I'm just going to spray with the Inglot setting spray. It's called the Makeup Fixer or the Fixer Tour de la Macrielle. Not too much, and I hold it very far away because this is like a k Nice. See what it does for the highlighter? And for cheeks, I'm going to be going in with the Kema Cosmetics Highlighter in Candy Carnival, I believe. Gold. And then kind of perk my cheek. See what all the high points there. Ooh, nice. And just for my nose, just use the tip of my finger. Oh, oh my God. Ooh, nice. It's gonna put it all over my body. Honestly. <gasps> Do you dare me to go over my highlighter with these flakes? Do you double dare me? Because I think I should. Oh, nice. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I want to use more, so I'm using this shade where my eyebrows are. So now I'm going to be going in with the mouth. It is a bit of a process, but that's why I'm here to show you. Going with the excess crusty, dusty, fusty, wusty, as we all know. So we're doing the good old triangle mouth. So I'm in the process of finding a black liquid lipstick, and I have an old one that is by he who must not be named. And I don't want to throw it out because I can't afford to get another one. But I'm just not going to say the name or really show the product. But I'm going to go in with the black liquid lipstick and map out the triangle. What I do is I just go kind of like a little flick from the corner of mouth. Matching up with the line. Just like that. Going straight down the middle and then just connecting. And just going eye for the cupid's bow, connecting that line, and let's keep going. Ooh. 
cool. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's all about the geometry, you know. I don't try for it to be perfectly symmetrical, but I want it to be some kind of good looking, you know? No, because I do want a bit more than just black on my mouth. I'm just gonna just on where the lips are. I like to take the extra triangle color off of the cupid's bow because I really want my cupid's bow to pop so I feel like I've got a nice cupid's bow so my favorite lip product ever is the house labs lip lacquer in ruby shine So I have to shake this for about 15 seconds to get it nice and loose. I'm so obsessed. Because I love glossy looks for drag. But actual gloss doesn't always work with wigs. So this is perfect. I used this to perform in and it lasted me the whole time. So it's just that nice pop of colour in the middle. It makes my teeth look less yellow, I hope. And another signature feature of my look is a beauty mark slash marks. And I'll be doing that with the Anti-Precision Eyeliner Pencil by KVD. Love it worked it into its own little shape so I can just stamp it on. I feel like just here is perfect. And I reckon another one like up here. So for lashes, I normally would have a pair of stacked lashes but I just don't, I just can't afford to get new ones every three or four times that I get them, so I took a pair of like Hemis Warehouse lashes that I've been wearing and cut up bits of cardboard and stuck them on because I've been dying for that really dramatic look. Just for theory, you know, that's gonna look so much better than a bloody wispy. <laughs> so I'll be right back. So after some fighting and swearing, I managed to get them on Look at that bounce. It's definitely something to perfect because this is an experiment, but I love it, don't you? I can't hear you, but I'm sure you do. I'm going to get into a wig, either green or orange, put on some jewellery, and what you would usually see me in at the club. So I'll see you again in a minute. My droopy eyelash, but I can't all be perfect. And this choker by Honatalia, I'm obsessed. I wear it whenever I can because it was expensive, so. That was the signature hair Mikalak drag makeup. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, uh, be nice to yourself. I think that's it. We made it to the end. I'm not sure I made it to the end, but you did. You made it to the end of this video. Not many would. So, thank you for joining me on my video. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye!